Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I am a biological anthropologist, and today I will be talking to you about the universal race. So I'm going to go from the universe to our own universe here on Earth. So by universal race, I mean the one human race. So in the illustration behind me, you see a double helix DNA morph into a human being, which I think clearly and explicitly explains we are all connected genetically as one species. So to start off, I'm going to do a quick game with you. It's a mental game. So I would want you in your head to guess the geographic origins of these people. All of the pictures behind me are of indigenous people from different geographic locations in the world. Now these are very old pictures. So if you look at them one by one, I want you to go through your head and think a little bit where they might be from. Starting off by the woman in the top left corner. She is from Finland. The guy in the middle, in the top, top row still, he is from Norway. The lady all the way to your right, she's from the northern area of Siberia. Let's come down to this gentleman over here. He is from coastal China. This lovely woman here in the middle is from Western Ghana. And my personal favorite, she is the Ainu. She is part of the Ainu people that live in Japan, the indigenous people of Japan. So maybe some of you correctly guessed, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit not what you expected. So back to modern name Suriname. This is a picture I took two weeks ago uh, in Lisponsi, which is in the upper Suriname River. If you show this picture to someone outside of Suriname, they would probably guess these kids are from Africa. The two ladies to your left are my colleagues, and maybe you would guess they're from India, maybe. The lady in the middle that looks Chinese probably thinks she's from China. Myself to the right, I've gotten a lot that I look like someone from Bolivia or Peru. And of course, this gentleman here in the middle, smiling, he is from St. Lucia. So a clear picture of the diversity of Suriname. So sort of leaping back, what makes us so diverse but connects us all into the one universal race? So I'm going to start off with a little primer on DNA, in case you don't know what DNA is. DNA is found in all of our cells in our body in what we call chromosomes. Now, if you take your DNA and ravel it out, you will get this genetic code. All those A, T's, C's, and G's make up your genetic code. And that genetic code, along with the environment, sort of determines what color skin you have, color your hair, eye color, your height, even your health, your how Susceptible are you to cancer, to diabetes, and in the end, even behavior. Now, your DNA, you should see as, is the genetic code of your body. It's sort of like the hard drive in your computer with all that programming language. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that in your computer, it's not just DNA within that hard drive. Now, your DNA that I'm talking about is found in your cellular nucleus, which is the brain of the cell. And there are little tiny things found in your cell we call organelles. And there's a particular kind of organelle we call mitochondria, which is sort of like the power supply to your computer. And in that power supply, you also find DNA. Now we call it mitochondrial DNA. Now what's so cool about this DNA is it is inherited or passed down through your mother. Now, why is that? So if you look at the greatest thing in life, uh, the point of fertilization between sperm and egg cells, the sperm cell also has mitochondrial DNA. Egg cell also has mitochondrial DNA. The moment of fusion, when egg cells and sperm cells combine, what happens is the mitochondrial DNA from your father is lost. And so you are left with only the mitochondrial DNA of your mother. And so now, with that knowledge, scientists can actually trace back your ancestry through your mother. 
So everyone in this room has mitochondrial DNA from their mother, got it from their mother, their mother, and so on. And so using that knowledge and that information, uh, there have been scientists who actually have collected DNA samples from different people in the world, used those samples to analyze the mitochondrial DNA, track back the ancestry, and what the data shows us is that everyone in this room and everyone in the world, regardless of which part of the world you are actually from, we originated out of sub-Saharan Africa. That is the original mitochondrial DNA of the world comes out of Africa. So genetically, actually, we are all Africans. So that's, this might be a complex illustration here, but you see this area here, that's the sub-Saharan Africa. So all the mitochondrial DNA, the data shows, goes back to Africa. So actually, you know, sort of to make my biological point, we are all one universal race because mitochondrially, we are all connected to Africa. Now at some point here you see we migrated out of Africa and spread out throughout the world. Now I am a biological anthropologist and it's always good not to constrict yourself to the field of biology. So I am going to jump over into the realm of cultural anthropology. And what is the significance of that? Oh, there's a huge significance. This is a complex tree, but it actually indicates the proposed origins of the different religions in the world. Now, I don't want you to look at the entire tree, but I would like you to focus on this area here. And you see here Middle East, Indian, Southeast Asian. So the three major religions of the world, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam actually originated out of that same sub-Saharan Middle Eastern area that biologically we originated from. So in fact, this, for me, there's no difference at all. So if I'm making this statement here, we are all one universal race, why do we look different? Why do we have different color skin, different heights of people? Now, I can use so many examples, but I re restrict it to one example, and that is skin color, because skin color is the only trait that we see when we first meet or see someone. And when you see someone's skin color, you automatically categorize them. Oh, he is white, he is black, he is Asian. In Suriname, he is Hindustan, he is Chinese, he is Ingi. I get that a lot, so. <laughs> Anyways, so what do you see here is the distribution of skin color throughout the world. The darker skin people are found within these two latitudes, close to the equator. The lighter skinned people are found in the temperate zones, north and south. Now, a very interesting distribution of skin color. Why is that? Basically, it coincides with the distribution of solar radiation around the world. What do you see around the equator are the most places that get a lot of sunlight because that's the highest radiation levels in the world are found along the equator. So people with darker pigmentation have an advantage and they are protected from UV radiation. Whereas people that live to the north or to the south where there's less sunlight have an advantage in having lighter pigmentation why? Because lighter pigmentation is essential in making vitamin D. And of course, people at the equator need the protection from UV radiation and get enough sunlight to make vitamin D. Regardless, if I have reddish skin color, dark skin, lighter skin, curly hair, sleek hair, tall, short, or whether your skin is blue or green, as these World Cup fans are, we are all just one universal race. And thank you, my universal friends.